Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar. I am Dr. Saksham Sharda. I'm the creative director at Outgrow. And I have with me here Dr. Larry Sanger, who is the co-founder of Wikipedia and also the chief information officer at Everypedia. So the first question is, uh, encyclopedias mm -hmm. have existed for more than 2000 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is also on your telegram, so if you want to like check it there. So this was my question was, encyclopedias have existed for more than 2000 years now with financial, legal, and intellectual factors playing a key role in their history. How do you think that these three groundbreaking projects of yours, Newpedia, Wikipedia, and Everypedia, will be looked at by the future generations? Well, um, so you're inviting me to put it into a sort of uh, historical context. Yes. Um, and I, I would say certainly there have been various compendia of knowledge uh, throughout history, but the modern society, uh, encyclopedia, um, my understanding is, didn't really come about until um, uh, the 1700s um, with, with um, oh, what was it called, the encyclopedia of, um, oh, I'm blocking the name now, uh, an English uh, encyclopedist, and then, of course, the great encyclopedia of of um, Diderot and D'Alembert. Um, and, uh, and there we're talking about multi-volume encyclopedia written by lots of different people um, that have been, um, that cover truly the, the gamut of human knowledge on every subject. Um, and uh, so, the the great innovation of the internet in general uh, is to bring people together to from all around the world to um, basically uh, to work together on on important projects and certainly one of the most important would be simply catalog cataloging knowledge um, and. Uh, the the fact that um, knowledge in uh, is is collected at will essentially from whoever wants to contribute it um, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, that's the great innovation of Wikipedia um, the, the fact that it's open there are, are no barriers to con uh, to contribution. Um, with some caveats, which for these purposes don't really matter so much. Um, that's, that's a huge innovation, um, I think. I, I don't think I'm responsible for, for that either. I think that it's just uh, baked into the Internet itself. Um, and... Um, Everypedia might be doing something uh, even more radical than that, which is already pretty huge. Um, because what Wikipedia does is uh, simply um, organize people to work on a single website on one uh, a single set of articles. Um, and they can't have multiple com competing articles. Um, and uh, the fact that it is 100% um, uh, nonprofit, um, and that it is uh, there are no sort of financial incentives to participate. Um, that means that that um, the uh, draw of people to participate in Wikipedia is relatively limited. It just so happens that the you know tens of thousands of active contributors on, on Wikipedia today. And throughout the years, it's been over a million people who have made at least one edit. Um, that that uh, ultimately is, it sounds like a lot, but it's not um, compared to the number of people who have the ability and probably the willingness ultimately to contribute to the world's knowledge. The reason that not so many people, not millions, but merely maybe 10,000 active contributors to Wikipedia are working on Wikipedia um, 
the reason that, that, that the number is not millions is simply that um, it's a single idiosyncratic website. Um, and that is going to appeal to only a, a limited subset of humanity. Um, what needs to exist, in my uh, opinion, is a network of encyclopedia articles, um, multiple competing articles from different points of view, from different cultures, um, and uh, that are all uh, organized in a way that makes them particularly easy to find and ultimately uh, rated by the public as well. Um, that would be a step beyond Wikipedia, what Wikipedia has, um, especially if it is also financially incentivized. In other words, if you can actually earn some tokens, a cryptocurrency, and become a co-owner of the network thereby, um, then uh, that, I think, is, is going to solve one of the biggest problems with Wikipedia, the fact that it, it is, despite the size, despite the amount of, of, of uh, information that, that it contains, um, is still actually kind of small compared to what it could be. Um, and it's not just a matter of, of size either. It's also a matter of quality. There's a lot of really great writers who don't participate in Wikipedia for the very simple reason um, that uh, they regard it as beneath them and they cannot work on, on their own terms. So I think that's uh, in the long run, um, if we succeed, that's a huge if um, with, with Everpedia. Uh, then, then basically, we will have a, a history. Will ultimately say, I hope, that um, we have created uh, the forum that um, enables all of humanity to come together as essentially equals. Um, a single uh, uh, encyclopedia uh, encyclopedia layer of the internet um, mm -hmm. in the same way that the blogosphere allows us to voice our opinions as more or less equals, um, at least as far as the technical protocols are concerned. And okay, so, so, so what I kind of derive is that you explain how Wikipedia was was a, a new kind of encyclopedia because it was cashing in on the technology at that time and now you guys are taking it to more technology like blockchain for instance and you're making its successor right so that is that is every pedia that's also taking into account blockchain and what you really described to me was like a rhizomatic structure of articles where you know every article is at the same standpoint but they all have different views or they might have different views so you're trying to invite more opinions as well Right. Well, I mean, that's how to, that that's not how it is right now. I'm talking about uh, mm -hmm. the the long the long term, um, since that's what you were asking about. Yeah. Um, in the in the short in the short run, and what what in fact we we are are uh, launching even today. Uh, today we actually launched a, a a new version of the site. Or actually, I don't think it's it's live quite yet. It will be soon. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. A, a new version of the site that makes it easier than ever to contribute. Um, and uh, so it's as easy to contribute to Everpedia as it is to uh, write a Medium article, for example. Um, mm -hmm. And there's uh, a, a chat um, area attached to each article, which can be done in real time. So if you want to collaborate in real time with uh, someone else on an article, that's also easier than ever. And uh, soon the uh, software will be released on a GitHub, uh, open sourced. And uh, that's also exciting to me. But, okay. Uh, okay. Have you guys thought of using because it just occurred to me right now, we thought of using interactive content on uh, every PDF, like quizzes that based on a particular article to test the reader's knowledge of that particular topic. I mean, just to like uh, make it more interactive, the content of the uh, of the wiki of of the encyclopedia. Have you thought I, about I, that? 
I, I, I didn't quite catch the question. Well, so, so, so you'd say there's an article. So for instance, Everypedia has an article. Yeah. What if you also had like a quiz at the end of the article that tests your knowledge on what the article is speaking about? Uh, have oh. you thought of doing something like that? Because it just occurred to me because like, you know, BuzzFeed uh -huh. and everything cashes in on the fact that, you know, people love taking quizzes and testing their knowledge. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that. Anyway, I was wondering whether you guys were thinking of adopting these modern kinds of uh, technologies to it. I seem to remember uh, a while ago, over a year ago, somebody mentioning adding uh, quizzes to articles, but it's not something that we, uh, I, it, that's not on the, uh, on, on the timeline right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not, but I mean, it's, it's not a bad idea at all. It, I, it, I think it'd be really neat. Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, we are, um, We've got a whole lot of new uh, uh, features planned, um, and we've got a very active front end team that are adding a lot of, of features to to uh, everpedia.org. And um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's entirely possible that we will add some support for that, and that'll be neat, right? I mean, uh, even if you don't want to change the um, Everpedia version of an article, maybe you'd be able to uh, take uh, or, or add a quiz uh, about it, and um, and that would that would actually be uh, again another differentiator with with, uh, with Wikipedia. So or like little opinion polls about a particular thing posted on the article, so stuff like that. I mean, just to record the viewers' opinion. Yeah. Anyway, I'll skip to the next Perhaps. question. Uh, why do you think academia has become commercialized in the information age to the point where it is practically unaffordable? And how do open source knowledge projects like Wikipedia disturb this education market by becoming critical information platforms? So I'm sorry, so what's becoming so expensive? Uh, academia has become commercialized. Oh, I see. So, uh, yeah. and uh, are you refer referring to... to um... Well, how to answer that question really depends on on uh, what you mean by the academy being commercialized. Are you talking about textbooks? Are you talking about universities, but also expensive textbooks? I'd say that goes there as well. But university education in particular is really commercialized in the states, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, so what would you have to say about that? And how do you think you know? open source projects like Wikipedia disturb the education market? Um, it's a good question. Uh, the, the problem is that education is uh, first and foremost a social thing. It, it involves um, people teaching other people. Um, uh, you, so uh, uh, mere content is not a, a university, right? Uh, I remember people asking your question about Wikipedia um, in the first few years, and it's like, could this be the basis of a new free uh, university? And um, my answer was, was uh, you know, uh, always the same, that, well, you can't really have a university without professors, um, and professors uh, play a, an absolutely indispensable role um, and uh, I, I'm not even a huge fan of distance learning, uh, frankly. Um, so uh, a, a book that shaped my thinking on this um, is by uh, Dreyfus called On the Internet. Uh, he's a philosopher. Um, and um, it, it was uh, basically he makes the point that uh, the problem with distance education in general um, is that actually being in the same room with another person is, uh, has a profound effect on, on uh, the relationship that you have with them. Um, and um, when it comes to motivating a student, for example, to, to study, it really helps that you actually have a face-to-face -face meeting and not just like we are having now on camera, but a... a um, one that is uh, fully embodied in the same room. Mm. 
I, yeah. you know, you could punch me in the nose or something or pat me on the back or whatever the, the case might be. Um, and and uh, we could go out and have a meal afterwards or something like that. Um, and uh, so I actually think there's something to that. Um, now, this isn't to say I don't have ideas about about how to improve on on um, uh, education today. And I, I also agree with you entirely that it has become much too commercialized. The, the endowments have become so enormous um, and, and uh, uh, government expenditures on, on uh, education, although they're thought to be not enough, nevertheless, they end up uh, funding um, uh, all kinds of new buildings that we don't really need and all kinds of, of uh, bureaucracy that we don't really need. Um, and uh, it, it seems to me that if we simply cut education down to its essentials, of uh, books and people meeting and talking about them um, and, and maybe supplementing that with uh, some online lectures or, or as, as a new you know, kinds of media to supplement the old, old fashioned books. Um, that's, that's all you really need to get a really good high level, high quality education. Um, and that doesn't require um, and any of the sort of commercial commercialization that you're talking about. Um, and uh, sure, could could um, new ways of organizing information online be play an important role in that sort of system? And the answer would be yes. Um, but uh, you know, uh, that along with everything else, like my my boys, um, my my older son is 13 now, and and he's um, uh, watching lectures about um, well uh, classics mostly these days, because um, uh, I've got him going through a a liberal arts program in the humanities, and like so he's like uh, watching listening to lectures about uh, the Odyssey, um, and um, so. Um, and that's that's like it, it's the amount of information that's available online is is um, really uh, amazing. Uh, the, the addition of yet another encyclopedia or even a whole uh, wonderfully advanced um, competitive uh, uh, marketplace of of knowledge, even adding that isn't going to um, change. The fundamentals all that much that'll just be another great new um addition uh new new set of resources i mean i would still tell him to read homer you know <laughs> so okay okay uh let me jump into the next one uh this is concerning you specifically so you have a phd in philosophy which is philos love and sophia knowledge yet instead of going into academia you have in a sense, created what some would call the ugly twin of academia, that is Wikipedia. So <laughs> I'm how, sorry, the, the ugly what? <laughs> the ugly twin, the ugly twin. Uh, uh, twin ugly, like a, <laughs> ugly twin, okay. <laughs> yeah, of academia, yes. that's Wikipedia. So how would you explain the existence of Wikipedia and its successes from a philosophical perspective? How would I explain the existence from a philosophical perspective? Um, well, is this a question about me or is it a question about Wikipedia? Well, I said Wikipedia and its successors. So what I'm really asking uh -huh. is because you studied philosophy, how do you feel or in what direction do you feel uh, these projects of yours are headed or like how did they come to be like what role in the let's say what role in the episteme of things do wikipedia and everypedia play i see um and you have to answer it from a philosopher's perspective and not a technology person's perspective or a, uh, right right um that's that's a very hard question um i'm, I'm not i'm not really I mean, okay, there's different things to say. Um, uh, Wikipedia was initially conceived of as basically um, 
a the application of some rather libertarian ideas to the collection of of uh, knowledge online. Um, the idea being um, the 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 core idea being that um, uh, people are motivated to uh, contribute to the commons um, uh, and, and, and will be increasingly motivated as the commons gets better and better. And I think we discovered that to be the case. Um, and really, we, we were simply applying uh, a lot of the, the same ideas uh, that, that were um, in the air uh, relating to um, open source software, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, <sighs> philosophy per se didn't really have that much to do with it, to be honest. Well, I mean, not originally, but if you were to look at it, if you were to look at the existence of Wikipedia and then the coming of Everypedia in comparison to the encyclopedias that have historically existed before, or in comparison to academia, how would you hmm. how would you define that? How do you? Um, well, okay. Hmm. Um, academia is. Uh, uh, all ab about um, exploring ideas within um, and 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 uh, acquainting uh, yourselves with uh, uh, acquainting students with texts and with mm. bodies of knowledge um, that uh, generally speaking the uh, uh, professors have and the the students don't and um, you know as as they often say. Um, it's it's uh, basically uh, filling up the uh, empty noggins of, of students with um, w what is known uh, about a, a subject. Um, or if you have a, a more liberal uh, attitude uh, or progressive attitude, then, then it's um, more about um, it, it letting the student explore what is known, um, and but uh, on, on their own terms, um, and and with the with the help of uh, of uh, teachers as as a guide and and so forth. Um, a, a wiki encyclopedia is a, a different kettle of fish altogether. Um, it, it it isn't really about. Um, well, it is about education. I mean, certainly the reason why there is an encyclopedia, after all, is is uh, so that we can learn things we didn't know before. Um, Wikipedia is a little bit different, though, in that I, I get the sense that a lot of the people who contribute to it aren't that, that interested in teaching um, so much as simply cataloging what they know and actually sort of showing off what they know. Um, and and then it's just a, a side effect that that um, one can learn from it. Um, uh, so uh, it, that but that's just a that's just a, a, a historical accident uh, about Wikipedia. That's just a, one of the features of Wikipedia. I mean, um, a good encyclopedia article um, isn't that way. It actually is written specifically for somebody who needs it, somebody who doesn't know about the subject. Um, so it is like teaching for sure. Mm. Um, I have the sense that that you have something more specific in mind, though, um, and and I'm not really uh, glomming on to what it is well, you have in mind. I'll take the response to this as you have given it, and then later I think you can like look at the responses and 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 see if you're able to get at it even deeper, because it's going to be like written as well in the end, right? Uh, the interview. So what I'll do is I will send you the responses from this, and then you can further elaborate on your thoughts in those answers uh, textually. All right. Okay, so you can give me like a brief uh, idea to these questions right now. So let, let me just jump into the next one. Good enough. Uh, 
So in 2013, the New York Times reported that University of California has been offering course credits to students for editing Wikipedia articles. What do you think <laughs> of this? What are your thoughts on this? I think it's ridiculous. Yeah, you think it's ridiculous? <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. Um, look, I think it's a great idea to, uh, as, as a, a general um, exercise, to write encyclopedia articles. It's, you, one can learn a huge amount, actually, uh, by writing an encyclopedia article about a subject, for sure. Um, but uh, the, the problem is that the people who work on Wikipedia are, um, well, a lot of them are kind of a pseudo intellectuals. Um, they they uh, also don't have a, a very sophisticated sophisticated idea of fair mindedness in general. Um, I guess that's not necessarily a, a, a huge count against Wikipedia from a, a lot of academics' points of view because they're so. Uh, they're, they're not very fair-minded either. Um, um, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, um, okay. So the, the, uh, if I were to sit down and write an encyclopedia article on Wikipedia as a college assignment, um, I would expect that it would be, uh, I would end up having, especially if it were on anything controversial, right? Um, uh, it would be very, very difficult, actually, um, to get anything done. Um, so, uh, for one thing, um, a lot of articles... Uh, And it, it uh, has gotten just worse, actually, since then. Um, not that I've spent a lot of time on, on Wikipedia lately, but uh, this is what I've heard over and over and over again. Um, and if, if it were possible um, to somehow limit the sorts of people who were participating um, to, uh, you know, fellow academics, um, then that would be great. And and you you might expect, right, a lot of the people who are on Wikipedia are themselves um, academics of one sort or another. A lot of them are students or they have advanced degrees or whatever. And, and they're, you know, they certainly think of themselves as scholars in, in um, some cases, um, not in all cases, for sure. Um, that doesn't matter. It's the, it's the, uh, uh, the culture of the place that is uh, in in a lot of ways antithetical to real scholarship. Um, real scholarship requires a um, collegial uh, back and forth um, between equals. That is not what exists on Wikipedia. Okay. Uh, let me jump to the next one, uh, which is <laughs> this is kind of related to the previous question I asked earlier, the one about philosophical perspective and things, but uh, it's a bit different. And so this is the question as a professional epistemologist and Cartesian, how would you describe your transition from Newpedia to Wikipedia to Everypedia? I'm sorry, how would I do what to my transition? Describe your transition Describe. from Wikipedia to Wikipedia to Everypedia. <laughs> um, first of all, I'm not sure that I would call myself a Cartesian. I studied Descartes uh, quite a bit. Um, but but uh, so I don't really think that, that really has any bearing. Um, so um, 
what I what I think of is like what what my old uh, professors who specialized in in epistemology might think about um, about uh, 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 Newpedia, uh, Wikipedia, and Everpedia. Um, I uh, I haven't actually talked to to uh, my uh, dissertation advisors about it. I'd be very curious to know what they thought thought. I did talk to one guy who is very proud of the fact that that uh, Wikipedia was started by a, an Ohio State um, PhD grad, um, and uh, I had taken a couple of classes with him, um, and uh, two or three actually. His name is Robert Kraut, um, and he's uh, I don't know if it's if he would call himself a pragmatist, but he taught pragmatism, um, and and um, he's an anti-realist, and pragmatism and anti-realism go um, hand in hand. The the whole idea that truth is um, somehow uh, basically a, a function of um, the uh, most useful or the most advanced version of of uh, what is articulated in in a knowledge community or something like that and in the scientific community um, is uh, basically uh, that that's that's his shtick and and um, so he thought that Wikipedia was a uh, a natural um, extension of of that sort of uh, uh, pragmatism that basically, as articles are edited and uh, with each new edit, um, uh, we limb the true, as they say, um, uh, get closer and closer to limbing the true. Anyway, um, of course, that's not how it works. Uh, and in fact, I wrote a, a journal article on that very uh, question. Whether that, uh, whether basically, uh, Wikipedia, the Wikipedia process, uh, incrementally um, develops towards, uh, you know, a more and more reliable, accurate um, version of reality, and and uh, that's not really how it works at all. Um, in fact, it does a random walk around the uh, level of, of accuracy with which the the uh, people dominating the article are comfortable. Um, and uh, yeah, if they're, if their notion of, of what is accurate uh, is uh, itself inaccurate, then um, yep, it's uh, the, the article is pretty much doomed to, to remain inaccurate for a long time. Um, within limits, of course, they can still they'll uh, even unreasonable, and uh, biased people will enable and are, they will allow uh, uh, new, well-established facts to be added, unless they're really, really unreasonable, which some of them are. They'll just like, if they haven't put it in or their friends haven't put some some verbiage in, they just delete it altogether. And um, so, I mean, uh, let's put it this way. Um, I think the average epistemologist would look on um, on Wikipedia uh, with with a, a fascination, but also a little bit of horror. I actually co-edited a uh, a, a uh, journal issue about, uh, and the journal was uh, I think it's called Social Social Epistemology. Um, and it's interesting. Yeah, so there are definitely some epistemologists who who are like, uh, and it, it's it's about it's about Wikipedia. That's what the issue is about. Um, and uh, so there are people who are in that specialization who really like Wikipedia. They actually think that there's there's uh, it, it shows some the fact that it's possible. The fact that it that um, uh, people are able to to um, work together in a new way using new kinds of, of uh, method, metho methodology, what could be called a methodology, um, is uh, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty fascinating. Um, but ultimately, you know, the the, the proof is in the pudding, um, and uh, you know you you ask any uh, any specialist 
in any field, um, especially outside of math, um, basically STEM fields, right? Um, look at the article about something that you know a lot about, right? How good do you think it is? And they invariably say, yeah, you know, I really like Wikipedia. Wikipedia is really useful. But, you know, the articles about my specialization are just not very good at all. And I've, I've been I've heard that over and over again from people. Um, and that's certainly my attitude, you know, um, when I go and look at the articles on uh, about philosophy and so forth. They're very amateurish. Um, they don't necessarily say anything exactly wrong, but it's like, you know, student papers, maybe reasonably well-written student papers um, and that have been well-researched, but they're still student papers. Um, so, uh, and that, uh, all right. So, um, Everpedia is another, another kettle of fish altogether, as I was saying before. Um, so Everpedia right now is just another wiki encyclopedia. The fact that it allows people to, uh, we allow people to write articles about anything. I have an article about my left thumb, for example, that's just an interesting little detail, but I'm not sure that that in itself has any dramatic new epistemological consequences. Um, but uh, when we start allowing the uh, everyone to contribute encyclopedia articles on the same topics that we have articles about, so that there's a competition between different articles. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting. It will, uh, will raise all sorts of interesting questions, philosophical and otherwise, um, when we observe that there are highly rated articles from radically different points of view, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, what I can easily imagine that the top rated article about knowledge, according to Indians, right, on the one hand, versus Americans, on the other hand, would be, well, I don't know. I think it'd be fascinating. Um, and uh, is, is, there a, is there a way to um, argue that one is more accurate than another? We'll have ratings to that effect, um, or at least I hope. Um, and uh, uh, one, one, I suppose might want to point to the the fact that different articles, as I think will be the case, different articles are top rated in different, um, well, in different uh, religious communities, political communities, nationalities, um, languages, and so forth. Um, the fact that there are, are so many different, um, but well-expressed um, and well-documented perspectives on all kinds of different important topics, um, that indicates that, I mean, a, 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 a cynic or a skeptic uh, might might um, draw from that the conclusion that, that knowledge is not, uh, is not possible um, and that, uh, and, and use the whole, uh, the, the whole project as um, evidence for um, cultural relativism. Uh, essentially, um, I don't think so. Though I think that uh, that ultimately, um, this this is something I, I look forward to when this is available, and I hope within say five or ten years, when it's um, fully developed, reasonably fully developed, um, it will be really interesting to, for example, um, compare the top-rated article about jihad. Um, uh, as as uh, as chosen by Muslim imams versus um, I don't know Christian American Christian scholars or something like that, right? And then actually go point by point comparing uh, the the uh, the similarities and differences between the articles, um, and there you have the makings of a debate, right? Um, and uh, 
uh, I'll tell you all of this discussion that I uh, uh, that I, I'm I, all these thoughts that I'm giving to you now uh, really don't they aren't exactly philosophical. <laughs> it's more um, uh, how how the world is is going to change um, as a result of uh, of the availability of different um, systems of writing encyclopedias. Um, I mean, the philosophical implications uh, really have, uh, uh, they, they have more to do with very basic questions like what can we know and how do we know it? Is it possible to have any knowledge of, of uh, anything complex, especially? Um, and uh, yeah, can there be knowledge of, of uh, um, uh, any topic in, in um, religion or politics, for example? Um, and what would that possibly look like? Um, so, um, yep. Makes sense. Well, related to this, the next question is kind of related to it. So, because uh, what we are talking about is, again, you, you talked about like the, the leaning of truth. So what is the role of an encyclopedia in a post-truth society? and in a society of unknown unknowns. And how does blockchain revolutionize this? Hmm. Um, just read the first part of the question again. So what is the role of an encyclopedia in a post-truth society and in a society of, in quotes, unknown yeah. unknowns? And how does blockchain revolutionize this? Uh, um, well, first of all, I need to understand better what a tr post-truth society is. I mean, if you're referring to to um, a society that is dominated by um, people who have been educated um, by continental philosophers and and uh, and literary theoreticians and who who um uh reject the idea of of truth and well um i don't think that they are um well particularly credible um uh intellectual leaders on this subject um the fact that that um that uh as a matter of fact, uh, you know, our media culture and uh, even academe uh, to, to a certain extent are um, dominated by people who don't really care that much about accuracy anymore. Um, and well, obviously political culture as well. Um, that's uh, if that's what you mean, and of course I agree that that uh, that is the case, and it's a uh, it's a uh, very sad, and I wish it weren't the case. Um, so um, one hopes one hopes that a well uh, um. A well-developed encyclopedia or encyclopedia network will make it easier for those of us who care about uh, objective truths um, to uh, do the fact-checking that isn't being done um, by media sources and politicians and others who... Um, basically use propaganda and bullshit to uh, um, advance their various agendas. Um, but uh, of course, they will be involved in the development of, uh, of a, an encyclopedia network as well. Um, so 
it's easy to imagine how different political parties will have their own top rated articles. Um, uh, uh, you know, you can imagine how uh, labor in the Tories, you know, Democrats and Republicans will um, each have uh, different sets of, of uh, top rated articles and they will consult those articles as as being authoritative and yet they might contradict each other. Um, and ultimately though, I, um, the hope is that the, uh, the ease of uh, locating more authoritative information than exists on Wikipedia will make um, fact-checking um, uh, easier than, than it is now with um, the various um, fact-checking services like PolitiFact, for example, or uh, whatever. Um, a lot of those, in my opinion, are, are have become essentially um, themselves uh, biased sources of information. Um, and uh, ultimately, what, what are needed are uh, easy ways to find the sources that we can use to make up our own minds. And one of the great things about Wikipedia and now Everpedia is that they do make it fairly easy to, um, to find the original sources for um, different facts. Uh, I mean... Fact, fact checkers, after all, will uh, look at Wikipedia if there is no other source available and follow their links. Um, and that's a that's a good thing. I think that if there are a lot more people involved, like orders of magnitude more people involved in um, in organ organizing what is known on every subject, sure, that's going to definitely make it easier um, to to uh, rein in. Uh, the liars, um, uh, the, and the and the propagandists. I hope so. Anyway, so as well in a post-truth society, do you feel uh, this is a very hypothetical question? But do you feel that the modern population is kind of closed off to truth? They're like they can't handle it, so they don't want it anymore. I feel there's like an they can't bear the truth. So they're like, we're going to live in our delusions and we are happy with that. Mm -hmm. Of course, they think they know the truth, don't they? Um, uh, and, and so they care and they care a lot about it. Uh, so it's an insult. It's insulting to them to say that that mm -hmm. uh, they are cut off from the truth because they have it. Um, the, the difficulty is that um, the Internet makes it uh, so easy for us to confront each other um and uh, it it's not just that it's the, the 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 fact that people with uh impressive sounding credentials are on twitter for example or or wherever um saying things that you think are just obvious falsehoods um is uh is pretty outrageous, um, and and insofar as uh, you know, mass communication in 2019, uh, the tools of mass communication make it really easy for us to uh, uh, find people with radically different points of view from our own. Um, then yeah, it's those people certainly are. It, it will look to us as if they don't really care about the truth. I mean, that's what I think about a lot of my political opponents, quite frankly. That's what I think about some religious people, you know. Um, I'm, I'm, um, uh, I'm an agnostic, and uh, I just don't understand how certain people can make themselves believe certain uh, religious doctrines. It's just weird, uh, just, just for example. And so, of course, yeah, it looks, looks to me like they, they are just contemptuous of the truth or something. That's not how they think about it, of course. They think that I'm unenlightened or whatever. Um, um, so I actually think 
the there is a problem that we all ought to be able to agree on, upon if we are educated, especially had a liberal arts education. Um, and that is that there are relatively um, uh, ideology free um, tools of critical thinking um, that are not being taught um, at increasingly at any level. Um, and uh, my my impression um, in in a few of my classes, it was already getting to be this way back in the 1980s and, and 90s when I was going to university. Um, but uh, now my my understanding is that and even more professors are essentially teaching, uh, you know, infusing politics into everything that they teach. Um, and as a result, this they, they uh, have, I mean, if you do that, it's just a, a completely different mode of life, you know, um, to to uh, indoctrinate and to be propagandized, right? Um, than than to critically confront a text and just bring your own thoughts to bear on it, and and um, and uh, gradually over a period of years um, develop your own point of view. Um, and and that's that's what liberal education is supposed to be, um, by by uh, being exposed to the best that has been thought and said. Um, uh, we uh, are empowered to um, basically decide what we think and do it in a way that is uh, that is uh, uh, informed by uh, you know critical various critical tools. I mean, it's not just all about, you know, logic. Um, it's everything. Um, each different subject has its own, its own tools. And, 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 um, and, uh, and that's why you go to college. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, basically my worry is that that has, uh, and is increasingly going by the wayside that, that, um, that uh, university education in uh, the humanities, especially, is is uh, becoming um, a process of indoctrination, um, making it more difficult for us to actually um, properly take on board uh, an ar uh, an argument. Um, uh, I. I get the sense that this is this isn't changing in philosophy in the field of philosophy. Perhaps um, this, this isn't to say that philosophers aren't um, you know don't have their fads which they, which they uh, try to pass on to their students, which has always been the case. Um, but nevertheless, at least in philosophy, um, there is a, there's still a premium placed on um, rigorous thought. Uh, and uh, even on on uh, things like the principle of charity, which I think are like you can't really confront uh, an opposing point of view properly if you don't make an, a real effort to understand it. Um, so all of that is going by the wayside, it or or so it seems. Um, so I, so people tell me it's been a while since I've been in, at university, um, um, and. I would hope that that uh, the easy availability of the best versions of different points of view um, in uh, a, a in an Everpedia network um, would actually help people um, to basically, if you can if you can find uh, okay, let's say that you are a Democrat. And you just think it's anyone who voted for Trump is not just an idiot, but morally suspect. Um, and you cannot imagine how anyone could possibly um, support the person. 
Um, but if you had uh, at least the the uh, curiosity to try to understand a, a person, and and you didn't actually want to simply dehumanize them, and think and 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 conclude, just write them off entirely, um, concluding that they they are uh, just awful people, obviously, and that, that there's there's nothing that they could possibly say. It would be uh, it, it would be a shock, I think, to to. Uh, see really well written and documented articles, um, and not just we're not talking about about like uh, biased um, mm -hmm. articles from National Review or or whatever, right? We're talking about encyclopedia articles that are actually trying to state what is known about a topic, but they are the top rated articles according to. Trump voters, for example, on things like mm -hmm. immigration and um, I don't know. Uh, trade. Yeah, trade. OK, and then um, it would be really fascinating, wouldn't it? I mean, you'd be able to say, uh, 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 you know, um, not only might you learn something that you didn't know before about that point of view, um, you'd actually have the wherewithal to uh, uh, speak to those people at at their own um, using their own tools, mm -hmm. right? It's like okay, according to the top-rated article by Trump voters, um, you know, and then you come out with some factoid about immigration, um, and and uh, that could actually uh, help us to. Um, focus the debate, perhaps. Also, because um, it's educative as well, right? Because that's the purpose of education as well, to understand your opponent's view uh, properly. And that's what, so in that sense, it also educates you about your opponent's view really well. So, and that's what an encyclopedia should do as well. So, yeah. That's what I always thought. I, I mean, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be like the great Soviet encyclopedia that, you know, that uh, just gives you the party line. Um, and uh, yeah, if you if you read it, then you will know exactly what you're supposed to think for sure. Um, but uh, there are so many things that you will be completely ignorant of. Um, it leaves you ignorant. Uh, that's that's a huge problem that I have with with a lot of media today. Um, this is one of the reasons why I started a project uh, earlier that I never, I, I never um, finished. I still, I still want to come back to it called uh, Infobit, um, which, which basically, um, the, the the theory was that different um, journalists have their hands on different parts of the elephant, um, and uh, basically by uh, drawing facts from multiple different sources and 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 um, putting them all on one page um, with the sources uh, and you know pointers to the articles um, that uh, that would give us a much fuller idea of of the top stories of the day and and uh, I, I mean, I get the sense, you know, that if I just read the Wall Street Journal or Washington Post or whatever might be the case, the Times, um, that uh, I'm not I'm not even going to get close to everything that is known about about the subject. Uh, and it's all well, as you say, post truth society, the people who who should be taking the most care to give us the fullest picture of, of uh, the world. Um, so I, I think journalists first and foremost, but also academics, um, teachers, um, you know, if they stop caring, we become more ignorant. So if they stop caring about actually um, giving us the full picture um, if they place ideology or religion above the, uh, you know, the, the faithful representation of reality, if we reject the idea that there is a reality that we can faithfully represent, um, then uh, the ultimate result is going to be a lot of ignorant people and also a lot of, of uh, emotionally driven people as well. So.
Mm. Well, related to all this, I'm going to go to the last question, which is, uh, it does address politics. It also address, addresses academia and everything we've talked about, including philosophy. So here's the last question. So how do you think Wikipedia and Everypedia function in a society where there has been a growing popular distrust of experts, as you can, for instance, see in the Brexit referendum, for instance, as well as a distrust of inclusive, uh, sorry, as well as a distrust of inclusive language or political correctness? Uh, so just should I repeat it again? Just repeat it. That's a complicated question. Yeah. How do you think Wikipedia and Everypedia function yeah. in a society where there has been a growing popular distrust of experts? Yeah. And the second part is, how do they function in a society where there is a distrust of inclusive language and a distrust of political correctness? You know, inclusive language and political correctness is basically two sides of the same coin. It's two ways of saying the same thing. Uh -huh. uh, inclusive language is what the left calls it. Political correctness is what the right calls it. Right. So, mm -hmm. so how do you think uh -huh. Wikipedia and Everypedia function in society where yeah. there's a distrust of experts and a distrust of inclusive language and political correctness? How do they function? Well, um... or oh, what is their role? How do they function? Yeah. Where do they come in? Yeah. Um, I mean, the function of, of an encyclopedia and the basic function, of course, is supposed to be to uh, enlighten us about things that we don't know about. Um, and uh, the, the difficulty uh, of um, there's been such a, a uh, a great amount of suspicion uh, of of um, journalists and professors uh, on the right uh, because those people have been telling them things that they don't believe, things that they know ain't true, um, and and uh, or they think they know, um, and uh, so. Basically, it it's interesting. Um, it's much more difficult for um, for the right to uh, credit what they read in uh, Wikipedia, for example, or Everpedia, or the for that matter, just uh, you know uh, the the news media. Um, if they if they uh, believe that the the uh, people behind it are um, uh, in their ideological enemies, essentially, right? Um, now, I think Wikipedia uh, over over time has has become more and more biased. It's it's basically drifted left. Um, somewhat um, in the first maybe five years, it was pretty centrist when it, it came to political topics, and it made an effort to to be neutral. So I'm the author of the neutrality policy. I think it really matters a lot, um, and uh, definitely I think Wikipedia has drifted away from that. Um, and the reason why uh, the right uh, distrusts uh, Wikipedia is is that they think that um, the uh, Wikipedia is simply not going to give um, uh, give their point of view a fair shake, um, and uh, and that sort of of uh, unfair treatment they know. I certainly think is the case, is entirely possible, even if the person who is, uh, you know, representing what is known is a, a, a distinguished professor and one of the world's great experts on the subject. Because if they're simply stating their own point of view and it happens to be controversial, um, then it, uh, yeah, 
uh, doesn't matter how, how authoritative they are or how authoritatively they put it, uh, it um, there's uh, a, a social element involved. They're actually using their authority to um, uh, basically um, force the minds of others to believe things that they uh, are, are resistant to. Um, the the real question I think here or the, in the background I guess is what I'm saying the important question in the background here is what role do experts play or should experts play in society in general um, this is relevant to encyclopedias because encyclopedias are supposed to be a catalog of expert opinion um, and uh, if uh, an encyclopedia is biased, um, that essentially means that it's ignoring some expert opinion um, and uh, favoring some other expert opinion. Um, the non-experts among, uh, among us then uh, are sort of left in the dark about um, what uh, one side believes or not. And it's not, it, it shouldn't be surprising um, if, we, if we don't believe a resource. Um, if uh, if we um, believe it to uh, to be biased in this sense, um, so the the problem is that there's a lot of really good useful information, regardless of bias, in um, any encyclopedia because a lot of it isn't. Uh, political at all doesn't have a lot of, of uh, implications. The same thing can be said of a university edu education. Like ninety percent of the stuff that you'd learn at a university, well, maybe less than that now, but anyway, a lot uh, is is um, like politically irrelevant, and and uh, and that stuff is important to learn. And if we start like. Um, uh, dismissing all of university education because we think it's a, a, a as I was saying before myself, uh, a, a propaganda or indoctrination center, um, then, um, yeah, then we're really shooting ourselves in the foot. I mean, um, so just, okay, now I've said all of this, I feel like I haven't answered the question. Can you just read the question again and I'll sort I'm of really come to my conclusion? Yes. Uh, what do you think the role of an encyclopedia like Wikipedia or Everypedia, how do you think it functions in a society where there is a there has been a growing popular distrust of experts as well as as well as a distrust of inclusive language slash political correctness? Mm hmm. So um, I think the best encyclopedia articles can actually help bring people together in a way. Um, I mean, it sounds ridiculous. I mean, why, how could an encyclopedia article do that? So that maybe that's a, a, a an exaggeration. But what I mean is I get where you're coming from. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What what I mean is that that if it's really a a neutral article, um, mm. that means that it is going to fully and fairly represent um, different points of view and the facts that people use to represent their their points of view or to to support their points of view, all within the same article. Um, and and uh, you know, like for example, you want to know who was Shakespeare. Right? Um, was he just this guy named Shakespeare, um, or was he actually some other character, maybe a woman? Um, and and uh, it's uh, if you really want to have a sophisticated notion, uh, sophisticated notions on that question, what do you need? Um, you certainly don't need like uh, uh, a, a left-wing revisionist point of view only, which is maybe what you might get from certain college professors. You will emerge from that class um, in a certain way miseducated 
um, because you know a whole lot about one thing, but there's a lot more that's relevant to the actual determination of the facts, who was Shakespeare, um, uh, that you don't know about. So a, a fair encyclopedia article will actually give you facts that are relevant to determine yeah. what is what is known on the question. That actually is going to allow you to be a, a fair judge of different points of view, right? I mean, okay, sure, maybe it was, uh, uh, maybe there is something to, um, who is the guy who is supposed to be the author of of, uh, of Shakespeare's works? Some Lord. Um, I'm one in Oxford. I, I don't remember. Lord, Lord something. Anyway. It was, wasn't Bacon, was it? No, no, no. <laughs> it was someone else. But anyway. We'll, <laughs> we'll come okay. To it. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was that film about it, Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. So, in, in in the same way, you know, when we're when we're dealing with um, really controversial issues like uh, illegal immigration or migration, um, that uh, the more information, um, the better. Uh, I I think basically the uh, so notice I just used two different words. One of them is politically correct or inclusive language, mm -hmm. and the the other uh, is not, um, or not supposed to be. But if you don't know anything about the subject and you want to be a fair judge of the topic, then basically there should be a section of the paper that discusses the meanings of the different terms, that um, and and uh, as opposed to um, an article that takes a, a an objective tone, um, an authoritative tone, you might say, um, but which fails to mention, um, you know, the, the topic altogether, you know, that, that, that um, maybe it's a question uh, about uh, immigration. Um, and, uh, and the article, if the article never mentions the, the words illegal immigration, right um or or um uh what's what's the word i'm looking for um the f kind of fraud when you um um anyway uh if you never mention those those terms in the article um whether to use them or to explain them then when you hear a, a conservative use those terms, it's going to sound, um, well, they're going to sound misinformed, weird, mm -hmm. and in general, um, uh, like, like nuts, which is exactly how conservatives do sound um, to, to people who are only um, exposed to mainstream media sources. Um, so, I actually think that the the only way that we can actually come together as a society in general um, is if we actually learn each other's points of view. Um, and uh, an encyclopedia can really help do that if it really is devoted to neutrality. Thanks, everyone, for joining us for this webinar. That was Dr. Larry Sanger, the co-founder of Wikipedia and the chief information officer at Everypedia. Hope to see you all soon.